Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so we're going to be doing 711 from the fundamentals of chapter 7. And now we're finally going to be taking multiple cuts, all right? So we um, so we'll, we'll we'll see what that looks like. Okay? So here it has supports on both ends, right? So I, I need to find the reaction. So I know I have to get a y AX, which we know that's going to be zero. We have BY, and then that's it. All right. So let's start by let's let's start by solving it. Uh, let's start by taking a moment about A. Let's just get right to the chase. Okay. So moment about A. So I have a negative thirty here already that contributes to the overall moment about A. Okay, and then I have by going counterclockwise times six equals zero. All right, which is thirty over six, which is five kilonewtons. All right, and again, if we do a force forces in the y, okay, we're gonna have a y plus by equals zero and then we're going to end up getting minus five kilonewtons <coughs> for a y okay um, doo -doo -doo. okay and that's it so we know a y is actually going down all right all right and so here it's kind of they're, they're kind of cheating they're telling you to take the cuts between zero and three and between three and six okay most of the time, they're not going to tell you where to take the cuts. It's up to you, all right? So just like I've been saying, so after A and before something happens, right? So something happens at C, all right? So we need to look in between sections A, C, all right? So we're going to make a cut right here. And then we're going to an analyze those. So we have, this is my little section my little sliver of beam of length x okay i have a force here a y of five kilonewtons and then and then i gotta draw my react my internal forces and in moments so m1 and v1 and then don't forget try to add this in each cut after each cut so it's going to be between this this these functions that we're going to find are going to describe the beam from 0 to 3 a little bit before 3 2.999999 okay so now let's just solve for that so moment about point 0.1 we have m1 already plus 5x equals zero and then m1 is minus five x okay i'm going to split it up like this and then forces in the y so i have we have minus five minus v1 equals zero and then we have v1 is equal to minus five kilonewtons again constant it's constant between zero and three and this function is uh the, the moment function varies linearly between zero and three okay so we're we're finished with those now let's do the next cut okay and this one is so so we did before, after A and before C. So now we're gonna do after C, after something happens, but before B happens, okay, that force. So, uh, X and six, and let me just do one thing here. Okay. So these functions that I'm gonna obtain right now are gonna describe the beam from three to six, so. Let's see, so now my beam 
we're going to look at the whole left side. Okay, we're not going to look at the right side yet. That'll be for later on. So, just after six. Okay, so if I'm going to include this moment of thirty kilonewton meters. Okay. I still have a y over here okay and this beam the length of this beam element over here is still gonna be X okay but that X again it varies between 3 and 6 and now we're we forgetting something and if you said yes you're correct we need to get our internal force here of V2 now and then our moment too. Okay. So let's do this. So moment about point two. Okay. Let's see what contributes to this moment. Well, we have M two negative thirty, right? And then positive five x equals zero so then m2 is 30 minus 5x and now let's do the shear forces in the y and then we have minus 5 minus v2 equals zero and then v2 is minus 5 and again, taking derivatives, m, take the derivative of m1 with respect to x, we get negative 5. Derivative of m2 with respect to x, we get negative 5 again. Sweet, so we, we're doing something right. And now, let's just plot this. So what, does this, what do these functions look like? Okay. Um, okay, shear moment. So, and here's three. This is the where it gets split. Okay, so let's look at our first interval, zero and three. So let's look at the shear force, uh, shear force function v1. The, so from zero to three, it doesn't change. It's just negative five. Okay, so then we have minus five here from 0 to 3 0 3 and this is 6 okay and now let's look at v2 v2 again between 3 and 6 we have a negative 5 shear and it's going to stay constant for the rest of the time okay and that's our shear diagram okay so our shear diagram didn't change because all on this beam there wasn't any concentrated loads anywhere like something like this you know that'll cause the shear to change so okay so we have that now let's look at the moments so m1 okay evaluated at zero and we have zero okay and it's linear so we're just going to evaluate it at three Evaluating this at 3, we have negative 15. So this is 5, 10, 15. Okay. Sweet. So that's the first half. Now let's look at it from 3 to 6. Okay. Evaluating this at 3, I get 30 minus 15. So it's positive 15 now. So... So you see how it jumps? It jumps because of this, this moment occurring at exactly 3 meters, okay? So it makes the shear jump up to positive 15, okay? And then just like, just like I said before, at the, at the ends of the beams, okay, the free ends, we should have zero moment, okay? And we have 
zero moment there. So evaluating this at six, that's 30 minus 30, and that's zero. Okay. And then we're done. And but up beam. Okay. So this is what your shear moment diagrams will look like. All right. I hope you're able to keep up with this. Um, the next one, 712, will be very similar, except we're going to have a, a moment along the beam and also a concentrated load across it. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for your time, guys. Take it easy.